Hello, everyone. Welcome to the PCC, the Pop Culture Cult, episode two. Episode two. And uh, for the first time, we have Janice. Hi. Hi. Janice. Hi. Tell them what you're into. Uh, everything. <laughs> Uh, Stephen King, because I'm looking at a bookshelf full of Stephen King books. Um, Stranger Things, because I have a Stranger Things shirt on. And my group shirt on. Um, and just about everything else. Doctor Who. Doctor Who. I force you to watch Star Wars like a thousand times. Star Trek. So all kinds of neat, fun stuff. Um, so we're going to give you some news and our opinions on the news and everything that's going on. We also won't both went and voted today. See? Yay, for good Americans. We are the, the uh, happy alternative to uh, not watching the election stuff, so who fucking cares? All right, let's go with the, let's go with the news. Uh, we're going to start off tonight talking about Johnny Depp uh, being cast as Grindelwald in Fantastic Beasts 2. Now, the first one's not even out yet. They're going to do five total. They're already talking about um, how they're already casting for the next one, so they must be working on it already. Um, so what do you think about Johnny Depp being in the Harry Potter universe? Um, I'm not a huge fan, but I will reserve judgment until it comes out, I guess. It should be interesting. If he, uh, if he does have some Jack Sparrow in Harry Potter, no. But if he can stretch himself and be good, then, I mean, they're, they're going to make him Grindelwald, which apparently is the big bad versus Dumbledore. Um, then that should be interesting to see if that works. And Dumbledore will be in the next one. So uh, yeah. they're already talking about how to uh, cast him and everything. So that should be, we'll see what happens there. Um, that's a pussy can bond, which is awesome for him. Um, for the next one, um, so it came out last week. That Disney announced uh, that they had already broken their last year's uh, box office. Uh, they had already made uh, 5.843 billion with a B dollars. Um, and that uh, was before Doctor Strange came out, uh, MoMA, Mona, and uh, Rogue One all come out still this year for them. Uh, Doctor Strange came out this last weekend. We'll talk about it in a minute. But it made um, $85 million domestically and $325 million both globally in two weeks. So um, just to kind of give you an idea, um, they they project it to be better than um, was it Universal last year who had the big year. Um, they had uh, Fast 7 and Jurassic Park or Jurassic World and everything. Um, and so it's been a big year for them, um, and they have a really big year coming up next year. They've got two Marvel movies. Uh, they got Sleeping Beauty, the live-action Sleeping Beauty. Um, so what do you think about uh, Disney making all of the money? <laughs> well, I'm sure that Disney hasn't had this kind of year maybe ever. Um, I don't know. Good for them. They're making good stuff. So as long as they keep making good stuff, keep doing it. I, I, all the Marvel stuff is fun, obviously, and you, you like the Marvel stuff, but um, it's it's crazy what they're doing right now, and I just it's it's mind blowing that all of that like they are turning into Inca Empire. They are buying everything, they're controlling everything. As long as they put out good stuff, we're okay with it. So that's good. Um, came out last week. Um, one of our secret uh, obsessions. Is the Cloverfield universe. Um, we both really, really like J.J. Abrams. Um, the stuff that he did on TV with Lost uh, and Fringe. Uh, and then, um, his, of course, his movie universe with uh, um, uh, 8mm. No. Um, 8mm. Yeah. No, that's the, that's the... Okay, this is why we left IMDb open. I can't remember what it's called. So, J. Matt. J. J. There we go. So, it's Super 8. 
Super yeah, I told you. Super eight millimeters uh no, so no weird, yeah, yeah. whatever, sorry. It's so uncomfortable. So we we love JJ Abrams and uh and so uh, it came out that his solar field uh universe is expanding with the God particle. The God particle is um sort of your movie based in space, um where they uh, astronauts discover um something Think of uh, think of the alien from Cloverfield uh, in space in like a really small space, and so they're gonna find them on a satellite and do all this stuff with the God universe. Are you looking forward to the new Cloverfield universe God particle issue? Uh, maybe it looks interesting. Um, we'll see. Uh, the last Cloverfield. Ten Cloverfield Lane. Ten Cloverfield yeah. Lane was um, good, but odd. Um, I think when we got done, we both went, "What did we just watch?" What? I don't understand. Uh, <laughs> so it, it'll be interesting to see where he goes with this one. Uh, maybe a little more monster would be good. Monsters in space. Monster space movies are always good. Monsters in space are always great. Yeah. Except what, what about aliens. Well, and what about aliens. aliens. I was gonna think of. Lost in Space, the TV, the, the, the TV show was awesome. Movie, not so much. Um, in other movie stuff, um, we actually got the new uh, Star Trek DVD, uh, Star Trek Beyond, uh, that came out last Tuesday. We've already watched it a couple times and gone through all the all the extras. Uh, what did you think of the movie itself? I thought the movie was good. Um, not. Uh not the curse of the, isn't it the every other, right? So that was the, uh, supposedly the last one. I thought that one was good too, um, because Benedict Cumberbatch. But, uh, we'll talk about him in a minute. <laughs> uh, I thought it was good. I, I thought the extras were worth watching. The, the extras that we, uh, I, I really love the movie making process and how they do, how they shoot a lot of the stuff and how they work on uh, the scripts and continuously changing it. And on the set, um, Simon Pegg actually helped write it with Doug um, Doug Jones Johns. I think it's John, and uh, and they made a point of they're both super Star Trek fans, especially the original series, and so they were able to um, uh, uh, take from the original series. I thought the movie was awesome, just in a way that you know, if you ever watched Star Trek, you know how important the missions were. They were the majority of the show. Um, the, a lot of the other movies have been based on the ship. And uh, and, and the ship is important. The Enterprise is uh, one of the most important ships in, in cinematic history. And uh, But this was actually nice to be able to do something away from the Enterprise and have it be a missing mission. And what Carrington did was really awesome. The extras were really good. My two favorite, though, were um, always the two gag reels. The gag reels are always awesome. And then uh, they did um, a uh, thank you to Leonard Nimoy and uh, see you next time around to Anton Bud and Franco, who um, both passed away. Uh, Leonard d died when they were in pre-production, and Anton died uh, post-production. And so they made a point of doing something for them on the DVD as a, as a thank you, we'll miss you, our friend kind of thing and it was really nice that they did that kind of thing because you know it's 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 sad when you lose people especially Leonard I mean, it's, Leonard's such an important part of the Star Trek universe and and was really the main reason why the original series got done uh, he was the first actor they hired uh, in the process and, and not William Shatner so I'm just going to tell you something here guys it was Leonard and so it was awesome and then losing Anton was really good and it was really nice that they did that. And the extras uh, talked about all the other stuff, and it was just really cool. So I was really happy with it. Uh, hopefully, I know they did. They also signed on for another one, so we'll see if they do that one again. And then Sunday, uh, to wrap up our movie the movie watching, uh, we went and saw Doctor Strange. What'd you think? Well, I've never watched the or or read the comic book, so I um, didn't have any expectations going into the movie 
it's very uh, visual. And we didn't see it in 3D. We're going to go see it in 3D soon. Um, from what I understand, that's, that's pretty, could be a, a pretty big ride. Um, everything coming at you in 3D. Um, but I thought the movie was, was good. Um, not my favorite Marvel, but I would watch it again. Well, I'm sure we'll buy it. Not I'd love to watch the actors on that one about how they did all the, all, all the filming of everything. Uh, that was, that was really cool. Uh, I was really quite impressed with taking a character that's not widely known as, say, Iron Man or Captain America or Hulk or something like that and um, making it work. Um, I'm interested to see how the time gem, uh, no big surprise, the time gem's in it. I'm a fan of over my shoulder right there, so I'm pretty sure he's tougher than a bitch and did everything in the gauntlet. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I, I was really impressed with the movie. I thought it was uh, visually very well done. If you saw Inception, uh, it, it's very much the next evolution of Inception. Um, just the way they visually did everything is actually um, actually really, really well done. So, so that was, it was, we really liked it. Like we said, we're going to go see it again. And Benedict Cumberbatch. And Benedict Cumberbatch. Without an accent. It was it, very that, surreal. That threw me off. Like, that, and we were sitting like the first, like, two minutes into the movie and, and after the big action sequence with Tilda Swinton, the ancient one, and, and, the, and, and Benedict Cumberbatch comes on as the doctor, and I'm like, where's his accent? Where's his American <laughs> accent? But it makes sense. So, uh, but um, he is a great actor. I'm pretty sure he'd be interesting to watch doing a voice. <laughs> He'd make you cry. He'd make you laugh. And so, so we we really really liked it. Uh, we suggest that everybody go see it. Um, definitely go see it on the big screen um, for the visual visualness of it because uh, that's actually uh, a large part of the movie. Now it's a yep. plot to make it interesting. That's not on the big screen. So definitely go see it. Uh, we had two trailers come out last week uh, that were both uh, we I did a review on them uh, on reaction videos for them. Uh, Wonder Woman. Uh, and it was, uh, uh, yeah, like I said in my review, I wasn't like, it wasn't like the best thing I've ever seen. The first one was really awesome. And so um, this one was right on par with that. I wasn't like tripping and blown up. Since the Wonder Woman joke is kind of on the third one. <laughs> no? Okay. Anyway, um, so it was, uh, it was, it looks really awesome. I like the way it's gritty and, and during World War One shot and then it looks like uh, Rivendale um, when they have the money run. Yeah. And then, uh, it, it's a badass chick and Chris Pine. So, you know, how can you go wrong? Yeah. And they, and they came out that uh, Gal Gadot announced that she's pregnant. She's pregnant. And yeah. so, um, congratulations. Uh, so they're going to have a baby, I think it's the second one from what I read. And so everybody's wondering how it's going to affect the shooting of For Gal Gadot to make a new Loki, but then you could even suggest that maybe she could go be the Gal Gadot Loki and maybe because it's all CGI. <laughs> uh, and the other one we saw this week, which I'm really excited for because I love the first one, was Triple X, the return of Xander Cage. More importantly, it's the return of the damn coat. <laughs> I love that coat. I talked about it in the in the review. I live in the desert. It's hot here. Ninety-nine percent of the time, you have like one of these where it's just you know a little cold. And you would, never wear that coat. Uh, you would ever. never ever wear that coat. Never ever. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. It's the popcorn super movie coat. And Vin Diesel. <laughs> and chicken bikinis and big Donkey Kong fighting scenes. And Vin uh, Diesel. And, and Vin Diesel. So. And it, the car comes back, right? Doesn't the car come back? No, it was the motorcycle truck that. Oh, that's, that's right. right. Talking about. Yeah, yeah. And that's, again, that's a really cool video on the Wonder Woman stuff. So, anyways, they did it in the movie. I'm really happy about it. But the, the trailer looked uh, pretty much selling it on what they think it's going to be. Yeah. Vin Diesel kicking, kicking ass. Kissing ass? Kissing ass. Kicking ass. Uh, and looking good doing and it. And looking good doing it, as Samuel L. Jackson says. And, uh, and, and Samuel L. Jackson's in it. So, you know it's going to be, you know, it's going to be happening when they make this scene in there. So, uh, so. There's reviews on both of those on the YouTube channel, uh, Pop Culture Cult uh, on, you, on the YouTube channel, and so definitely go out and give those a go give those a run uh, and see what you think about it. Uh, 
in TV news, we'll start with this one up here. Um, it came out today, it came out this last week that Big Hero 6 is getting uh, a seat on the Marvel Universe TV show. Yay! The, the, Marvel, co- uh, the Marvel Comics, um, they match the uh, Thanos does in Big Hero up here. And, uh, uh, every, you know, and they're all, um, everybody's coming back except for the guy who voiced uh, Wasabi. Um, which was one of the women in the lower decks that I remember. Uh, and then uh, uh, Alan Tudyk is going to be coming in, and they're going to add a few more characters to the universe. Uh, we really love uh, Big Hero Six. It will be on a Saturday afternoon, and there's no college football games on, and we just we just have something mindless in the background while we're working on stuff. And uh, you know, you want to watch Big Hero Six? <laughs> yes. Uh, so, are you interested in watching the TV show, or because all we need is another TV show to watch? Yeah, and you know we'll probably end up DVRing it or something because we just never have time to watch it when it's actually on TV. But yeah, um, I'm excited. We'll see. And hopefully, they keep it um, pretty close to the movies for this. Yeah, they should be just you know more adventures with Thanos and the Hero Rising and you know changing the team and all that stuff. Um, we saw the first trailer. Now, one of the things that happens with us a lot is we end up um, typically recording stuff and then going back and watching it you know, the next morning. And uh, we understand that TV is, is um, you know, made for commercials and stuff, but um, you know, we try to skip it and, and binge watch everything that comes out. So, uh, we were watching something on FX um, and this commercial came on for a new show now, whenever ta- the word taboo comes up, everybody's like, oh, it's sexual and everything. Well, we went and watched the trailer. No. No. Not even close. But Tom Hardy's in it. But Tom Hardy's in it. <laughs> I'm seeing a trend here. <laughs> what are you trying to say? Um, Tom Hardy's in it. He's one of the executive directors, uh, um, ex- executive producers on it, along with Ridley Scott. And uh, it's set in uh, 1800s London. Um, and, uh, Tom Hardy's family, um, one of his parents or something like that, his, his, his last parent died, and, uh, he's been gone for 10 years in Africa, living, uh, in African tribes and stuff. Uh, and, uh, as my wife would say, uh, Tom Hardy naked? Okay. <laughs> uh, it's on TV, you won't see everything. No. Um, no. so they, uh, he comes back after being gone for 10 years, uh, he was believed dead, and he um, tries to take back the family business. And the family business is actually being, um, trying to be acquired or run by the East India Trading Company. And if you know anything about the 1800s uh, in the world, the East India Trading Company was probably the largest, well, well not probably, it was the largest corporation in the world and ran pretty much most of the politicalness of, uh, um, of European and trade and everything else. And so they had all the money. Um, so, it's coming out uh, in early 2017. There's no official date yet, but it looks amazing. And it's a time period that's not normally put on TV. Um, black sales on on uh, on uh, those parts, I believe, is about the only time period. Unless you want to talk about Pirates of the Caribbean and movies like that 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 put on there. But TV wise, uh, it looks really interesting. I'm really I'm interested in seeing uh, kind of where it goes. It's only supposed to be like it's only a couple episodes, six or eight episodes, yeah. or something yeah. like that, something yeah. along that line. So, uh, having that, um, uh, kind of that short sample size by Stranger Things, dropping hints. <laughs> uh, so what do you think? We, we, other than Tom Hardy being naked, <laughs> it kind of feels like a it's, it's kind of like um, uh, Peaky Blinders, uh, Pirates of the Caribbean, and Tarzan all mushed together, yeah, and you know. And and on FX where they've apparently spent a lot of money on it because it, it looks amazing. It, it looks amazing. So I'm I'm interested. We'll we'll keep you uh we'll keep you abreast of what's going on with that. Um, I like because what we need is another TV show. Um, like I said, we DVR everything just to try to keep on everything. I couldn't tell you how many shows we have right now. Um, last of the TV thing, and this will be a reoccurring theme on this show. We love Stranger Things. Talked about this before. 
He's our stranger things sure. It's Abbey Road. Um, I turn me upside down uh, with Will. No, actually, that's a word when I turn me upside down. I don't know. It's it's Abbey Road. Um, I love it. And uh, and so we love Stranger Things, and there's been a lot of inf- uh, information and stuff that's come out in the last week with um, with that. Um, it came out today uh, that Sean Levy um, actually did a Q and A with Collider News, and uh, actually was promoting a screening. of stuff that happened with season one of Stranger Things where they came out of season two. Um, he kind of hinted in that interview uh, about uh, um, a season three, which will be pretty, uh, I think it was awesome that they're already talking about a season three. Of course they're going to do a season three. Uh, of course they're going to do a season three. Why would you even thought that there was going to be a season two? We all knew it was going to be a season two. Um, so the season three is kind of already in the, in the background. Four, um, and the quote was pretty much uh, we were super stoked that it worked well and all that they're going to do it again. Uh, so we're really excited that they're already talking about season three. But in season two, some news came out uh, that we found that was really awesome. Um, according to uh, Entertainment Weekly, Danish actress, right, Danish, uh, really, Lena, Lena Berthelsen, Berthelsen. Who uh, is pretty much unknown as, as, as we know of, uh, is going to play a character by the name of Roman. Uh, she's an emotionally damaged, uh, magnetic young woman who suffered a great loss as a child, although she is not, does not live in Hawking. Uh, she is mysteriously connected to the supernatural events that go on in our land. Uh, so, so maybe she's another child abductee. Another child um, um, uh, abductee. Um, maybe somebody that's kind of doing the opposite of the Eleven, maybe? Maybe. Maybe she's uh, the sheriff's daughter. Oh, ooh. Ooh. I didn't think about that. I didn't think about Harper's Law. Oh, see, now that's all kind of bullshit like that's why you're on the show. Because <laughs> um, I would have never thought about that. Um, uh, we'll get to that one. Um, uh, Paul Reiser um, is also going to be on the show um, as a doctor. Um, he's uh, Paul Reiser. But if you're gonna do an '80s show, and you're gonna do homage to '80s kind of stuff, kind of a Goonie-esque show, kind of a Goonie-esque show kind of thing, you have to have Sean Astin in it. Well, guess what? Sean Astin's gonna be in it. It's awesome. I, when they announced this, I was really happy that they're adding these characters and and, and, and expanding the plot. I thought it was awesome. Sean Astin's gonna be in the show. <laughs> There has to be at least one, maybe two jokes about Goonies, the Truffle Shuffle, the Truffle Shuffle. You know, like, well, and we never die. Goonies never say die. Like <laughs> Willie needs to go in and say something, whatever, and and we never die and walk out. You know, it, it, it has to happen. Um, so he's gonna be playing um Bob Levy, Levi, uh, uh, uh a kind-hearted former nerd who went to high school with Joyce. And Harper, and now manages the local Hopkins Radio Shack. So you know that the kids are going to be in there multiple times trying to buy stuff to fix the radio so they can talk to the Upside Down or whoever's in the Upside Down. Probably not Will, but I'm pretty sure they'll be trying to get a hold of Barb and stuff like that. Um, it's Barb! Just, Barb! Just, hashtag justice for Barb! <laughs> uh, and so uh, uh, we're really... I, you can tell we're really excited about seeing him and about it. Uh, it, it we don't have time, but I want to describe it. I promise you. Uh, so we're really excited to see the new characters. Um, you have any more, you know, thoughts about Sean being on the show? No, I and, think I just think it's completely appropriate. Like giggly board, but I, it's completely appropriate. Um, there has to be more. The uh, if Patrick Swayze was still alive. Oh. So that would be awesome. So, um, and then uh, one of the things we wanted, I wanted to kind of touch on tonight, um, because uh, we're we're about pop culture, right? We talk about uh, movies and TV shows and cons and comics and all you know the stuff that's going on that we all really care about uh, more than we talk about the pop and toys, which is a great one that we can call it over. Um, 
one of the things that um, I actually got to be able to do was finish uh, the Ahsoka book, um, Ahsoka from uh, Star Wars The Clone Wars, um, and then uh, actually a woman of rebels has got her own book. Uh, I got a chance to listen to it. Um, Ashley Eccleston um, actually uh, read it um, in the in the audio audio book. She did a really good job. It was nice to hear uh, Ahsoka's real voice. Uh, the book itself uh, is really kind of interesting. Uh, now I will admit. Um, uh, Except I, you're reading I, a book. I'm reading right Aftermath, Life Dead. I'm, I'm getting there. I've read, yeah. there. I've read some, but you know, he I reads read, comics. I read real slow, and so if it doesn't keep my interest, you know, or if it really hard for me to get back to it, then I'll just stop reading stuff that's in the comic book. Um, the book was really interesting. Uh, I actually was uh, thinking it was kind of that uh, teenage. Kind of the first half of the book was kind of the teenage angst of kind of, you know, what am I going to do with my life? I don't know what I'm going to do. All this other dead. dead I don't like all the Skywalkers. And it's kind of a side. Well, she was trained by Anakin, mm-hmm. so it makes sense that she kind of has that angst and she left the Jedi order to go find her own way and everything. So, about two thirds of the way of the book, it changes. I'm not going to give away spoilers of what happens. Fuck me, she ain't even crying. It goes super dark, super fast, uh, way awesome. There's a huge twist in the, at the end that is, uh, if you're watching anything other, outside of the uh, outside of the movie realm, you're totally getting it. Um, and so it was nice to to see the connection. Uh, one of the things they're doing in the Star Wars universe is connecting all the different uh, things we're watching Rebels, and Rebels is connected to the Clone Wars, and it's connected to uh, well, be connected to Rogue One. I just said it yet. I know shit. Um, or I'm guessing, whatever. Uh, so hopefully they'll, you know, they're, they're connecting the, the whole universe to itself. And Ahsoka was definitely worth the, definitely worth the read. Definitely worth going through. Um, it's like uh, it, I, I watched it on YouTube. It was at seven and a half hour of listening to it. Listening to it. I sat down. I was like, yeah, I got to do that later today. Then you know, you jump in the in something worth listening to that you're on. Or you're on a road trip. Or you're on a road trip, you can totally do it. And, you know, most road trips that you take are, are uh, eight hours in one direction as it is. So you can definitely do it that way. Um, so I just wanted to share that. I thought it was really cool. Uh, any last thoughts about how uh, anything anything going on you're looking forward to in the next couple of weeks? Uh, not the next couple of weeks. We talked about Guardians, Guardians of the Galaxy 2 uh, trailer. Yeah. Yeah, that so was. Baby Groot. If you haven't watched it yet, you have to watch it. Baby Groot. Yep, maybe grew in the in the Michael Jackson coat. Uh, it's not it's the Reaver coat, but it looks like a Michael Jackson coat. Oh yeah. Um, and so we're we're just, we're we're, uh, we're actually getting into the the Christmas time while the big stuff is coming out. Um, Fantastic Beasts, Rogue One. Um, we we kind of want to see um, uh, Hacksaw Ridge. Uh, a lot of the officer stuff is starting to come in. Alien, uh, Arrival, Arrival, Arrival comes out this week. So we were looking forward to get, get that in and stuff. So what do you guys think? Uh, any kind of news that we didn't cover that we uh, that you want us to talk about? Uh, what do you think about what's going on in the news with what we brought up with Johnny Depp and uh, and the stuff that's going on with Andrew Lincoln and everything? Uh, let us know. You can reach us um, on Twitter at pop pop. I'll get it up. Pop underscore cult one on the Twitters. Uh, Facebook, we're the Pop Culture Cult. On YouTube, here we're the Pop Culture Cult. And, and on Instagram. And we're on Instagram now. Uh, and so, if you, uh, if what do you think? You know, what do you, are you looking forward to stuff? Do you think it's stupid? Uh, let us know. Uh, we're gonna try to do one of these videos once a week. And so, uh, we are hoping to see you some more. I'm really glad you're here. Thank you and good night. Bye.